Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm so blessed, humbled, privileged, and super excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio. Well, the woman who I would consider literally a legend who has written this book, Light Medicine, A New Paradigm, the Science of Light, Spirit, and Longevity, and her name is Dr. Anna Maria Mahalcha, and she is from Romania, but now living in the West, and she is literally amazing. <laughs> How oh are you, Doc? God. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for this mind-blowing introduction. Well, you deserve it. And as I've said, as I was talking to her off air, guys and gals, uh, we will be spending a lot more time in this podcast on her amazing book, which I have been reading uh, for about three weeks, which for me is unbelievable because I usually rip through books in about two or three days. But uh, there's just so much to unpack in this information uh, that you've written. And so I'm so grateful. But let me give you guys her bio. She, Besides being the author of that book, she also is a board certified internal medicine doc. And she's president of AM Medical, an integrative health clinic with a focus on anti-aging and reversal of all diseases. I will also give her a huge shout out um, in that she is one of the first people to write like prolifically uh, about uh, peptides and exosomes. And, you know, she's even mentioning bioregulators, just basically every advanced alternative healing modality uh, that we know of currently on the planet. So, you know, again, Mad props to you. It takes a lot of courage, especially to be an allopathic physician, knowing the pushback that you get from, you know, let's call them the parasitic energies uh, to do what you're doing. And then, of course, like you said, you have an amazing sub stack, which I'll put up right now. I'll also list this at the back. Actually, it was already up. I apologize. That's her sub stack. Please subscribe to her sub stack. It's profound. She has unbelievable information about the V, what's in the V. Uh, she's obviously, as she said, a very staunch anti C activist, yeah, I talk in code in code now. Um, but uh, her her Substack is amazing. She does interview really top level researchers and physicians too about you know people who are on the front line, uh, who are dealing with this giant pandemic, scamdemic, whatever you want to call it. So, Doc, with all that said, before we jump into the topics, because we're going to go deep on light medicine, give me your opinion right now of humanity from a standpoint of where it goes in the next two to five to 10 years. And, you know, obviously you talk a lot about the transhumanist side versus the divine, sovereign, empowered, and free side. That's kind of how I label us. Like, where do you see us going? Well, we are in this spiritual war that really is in the process of defining the future of the human species. And this is yeah. what we're literally find it, fighting for. You know, we have Juval Harari, who is uh, Klaus Schwab's pet, who is endeavoring to make the soul and the spirit a thing of the past uh, right. with AI nanotechnology and all of these things. So the alternative that I also describe in my book is clearly saying, you know, we haven't even began to tap the potentials of our own spiritual force. We're divine spiritual being incarnated in this body. And to really understand how the control mechanism of our own brain, of our physical body works for self-healing, for downloading information from the future, and so I have a unique perspective because not only am I an, an allopathic physician, I also studied a lot of alternative uh, medicine. And then I, uh, after literally being everywhere and looking at everything, including studying with shamans and psychic surgery and acupuncture and being a Reiki master, I found Rantha School of Enlightenment. And what was special about that is I was just tired of philosophy. So Rantha put out teachings and said, well, 
this is not the truth. It becomes the truth when you experience it through right. disciplines. Right. And uh, so now I had, you know, years and years of training of personal experiences of self healing, remote viewing, uh, you know, sending and receiving all kinds of things out of body travel. I had a near death experience and it has changed everything for me. So the future of humanities and the future of science, understanding that who we are, what we are, why this, what we are is being attacked is very, very important. Beautifully said. Um, you know, I, I, well, the first point is talking about light medicine, the book, but um, I really liked how in the beginning of your book, you know, you likened your ver your journey or your voyage, you know, in this incarnation in your physical body to like really having to go through those various dark nights of the soul. That's how I kind of call them of, you know, manifesting cancer, right? Like you said, as a child, you were going to cure cancer and you were so focused on it that you willed it into your life, right? Because we are ultimately reality creators and we co control our reality by our words, thoughts, and actions. And it's like, you then had to have that profound experience. Like you said, the NDE, which allowed you then to receive all of this information. And, you know, I kind of want to ask your opinion. And by the way, I've had a couple of uh, dark nights of the soul. I attempted suicide uh, at 41 at rock bottom in my life after what had happened to me. And then of course I found, uh, I mean, I've always been walking this path, but I also found uh, Bufo. Uh, and so, you know, I was blasted into the source field uh, and then I've done it a couple of times, of course, with my wife also since then. But uh, I'm I'm totally with you. I, I see things very similar to you. As I said to you, your book is so profound and it just opened so many paths. If anything, it turned on a lot more latent DNA in me. But do you think that the reason so many people are not seeing the things the way you and I, and again, many others of us see things is because they haven't experienced dark nights of the soul, meaning that they are just so entrained you know, in the matrix, you know, in their little cubicle box, their little sandbox of their life, where it's just the same wife or husband for 40 years and the same job and then the retirement and they just never challenge themselves. Yes, I think that that it's very, very important, the concept of change. Uh, yeah. And really, you know, yeah. we have to break ourselves out of our own mental boxes, whatever right. that means. And in this yeah. journey, as incarnated spiritual beings, whatever emotional baggage we bring with us, mental baggage, whatever blocks there are, nobody can help us break through that. We have to break down our own walls uh, of our own minds and free ourselves. And so I think that that's definitely, uh, you know, this idea of stability, you know, like you're saying the same job for 40 years. Well, that is a life spent, uh, you know, right. not exploring, you know, the hardship right. though of the spiritual journey is that everything changes and every day is like a new page which is phenomenal, but it's also adversity. And to really understand that the adversity makes you great, makes you wise. It's, it's you know, right now we're in the biggest fight in the universe that we could have ever been in. And so let's participate. So it's, it's a complete attitude shift, but people need to understand that that change comes from within them, not from without them. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. I mean, I always tell people and say this and, you know, and, and again, I know, you know, you had to learn this. We all are walking, as I like to say, we're all walking the same path back to perfection, God, universal consciousness, source, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some of us slower than others and no rate of speed is better than another, right? So you can't judge or condemn. Everybody is where they are exactly designed and intended to be. But the greatest, con the greatest growth from a soul standpoint comes through contrast. Right. So the, the harder your challenges, the bigger the obstacles, the more your soul evolves and grows. And so it's 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 fascinating uh, to truly understand that and live that. And so you're right. It's not just about like reading it and getting out of your box. It's about experiencing it. OK, so for the first point, you know, I want you to kind of just talk about the concept of light medicine. What does light medicine mean? So the idea really comes from the perspective that it, regular science has a separation between the material reality and the spiritual reality, and that is a complete lie. 
Uh, so like medicine is based on a new model of medicine right. that says, you know, that everything is spiritual, everything is God, and that it comes from light, from the idea. So we bend light into form through our observation. This would be the concept of quantum physics, but it's more than that, really. So we are divine creators. And that our attitudes that we are observing are actually creating either a, uh, a state of harmony or in harmony in the right. body. And that right. can be explained through biophysics, biophotonic light coherence, and has a science of its own. So what I did in light medicine was, uh, was re-look at everything from that perspective, explain different models of science, for example, torsion physics, the density of time, Time that explains things like, like uh, out of body experiences, like information, how time can be actually reversed in the body, how we can be know all things simultaneously or right. remote view of future and know it now. So these things that are considered, you know, conspiracy theory, they're not. They're our nature. It's just that we were captured in a false. A model of science that's completely a lie. And the future is all about understanding that, that we have infinite mind uh, that we can tap into and evolve into. And then looking at life from that perspective is a completely different uh, journey. Beautifully said, uh, man, there's so much to unpack there. Um, it's, it's mind blowing. The structures of the third dimension are all designed to externalize, you know, everything, you know, especially teaching people that they have no power, you know, that everything is the external savior, right? My politician, my priest, my doctor, you know, they never ever learned that true power lies within, right? Because, you know, as the great uh, spiritual avatar, Yeshua, I refuse to call him Jesus, <laughs> you know, ta taught us. And obviously there were many great spiritual avatars under many different names and many different cultures. Right. But the, you know, the, the teaching was that the kingdom of God was within you. Yes. And when you understand that, that through that higher self-expression or that access point, uh, you have everything you need, as you said, internally, but you have to learn uh, how to go within. And so many people today don't understand that. And as you know, it's not taught in school, uh, you know, because again, they want the power to be externalized so that people remain disempowered. I mean, I think of religion and how big of a control lever, you know, most, uh, especially Abrahamic teachings and religions are. I mean, it's insane how much people have been taught to think that, you know, going to Sunday, going to mass on Sundays, Anna, is spirituality. You know, and it's, it's not, and it's just, it's just, it's good to see, at least in my opinion, I know you share it with me that most of these third dimensional constructs are unraveling now. And the, the problem is if we can define it as a problem, because that's just obviously a linear third dimensional uh, label, but the, the, ultimately there will be a lot of quote unquote grief and, you know, disharmony to come because there's so many people, you know, who are vibrating in victimhood and not empowered and not knowing how to take ownership or accountability or personal responsibility for their life. So it's a great time to be alive, a very interesting time to be alive. But, you know, obviously I know, you know, this statement, you know, uh, there's going to be darkness before the dawn. It seems like we have to still go through this collective consciousness, dark night of the soul that you and I have already been through. And many people like us have been through to truly get humanity, I think, to a place where they just realize that there is no more time for duality and divide and, con you know, divide and con conquer, uh, you know, what I call puppet theater, because that's all it is, right? Like everything is always about like, put everybody on one side, right? Like you have Republican, you have Democrat, you have liberal, you have conservative, and it's just constant duality, constantly getting you to buy in and opt into a side when the only solution, Anna, is to opt out, to be again, divine, empowered, sovereign, and free. And so many people still do not understand this. And it literally if you pay attention to it, will drive you crazy. I mean, you really can't pay attention to it. Do you, do you feel that that is the best strategy to just opt out of the narrative completely? 
Uh, actually, I don't. So I think that, uh, you know, as you know, I'm extremely involved and yeah. that, that, br uh, breaking down deception is very important. And that only if we are active, as for example, you are in reshaping ideas, in evolving concepts, in bringing forward a future and being fearless about it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. and I, we, we talk about things that mainstream does not talk about you know? and, and it would be met with a lot of uh, antagonism but let's say if you go back to the avatar uh, Jeshua Ben Joseph who was a great initiate who was you know he he was not a timid person he literally waged war on the establishment you know of that time and so to understand that to be spiritual means also to put the armor of god on and to swing the sword of truth and right, right now is a time where we all have to do this because the more our voice is counted, we are in a spiritual war where there are satanic forces that want to take over humanity and want to destroy free will and the source, the, the, the soul. And we have to say no. And yeah. as soon as we as divine beings say no, you know, the game is over because, uh, you know, then, then all of that reality actually comes in motion and a divine being can cannot be conquered, cannot right. be subdued. Right. So right. I think it is extremely important to, it is not about fighting someone else's perce uh, perception. It's just simply of expressing your own, not to right. control others, but those who desire to know and wish to participate in moving forward, they will gravitate towards us. And then that is how the morphogenic field changes. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, all of those things, you know, what I what I meant by opting out is just like opting out of the theater. You know, of course, you have to stand in your power and stand in your truth and be who you are. But as you know, it's difficult, you know, for even for us, right? Like, I'm sure you have family members that think you're crazy. You know, I mean, we all, you know, have these like internal uh, dialogues that we have to deal with, like with loved ones and family members and like, you know, inner circle people. But I've just found, I guess, in the last two years, especially since whatever occurred, however you want to define it in 2020, that I keep my circle of, of people who are in residence, you know, like I don't mix my energy field with people uh, who are not receptive to it, right? Like I can go out in public and I can, you know, get a, you know, be who I am and stuff like that and not have to deal with things. But like, I'm not going to go over to, you know, holiday parties with people uh, who are, as I call it, not vibrating in resonance to, you know, be brought into it, you know, to get that opinion question and say, hey, why are you not doing this? You know what I mean? Or like, what is your opinion? Because as you know, you can't give the answer. But yeah, I'm totally in agreement with you. Uh, it is up to people like us to stand in our power, to stand in our truth and to continue to put this truth into the universe because so much is di di uh, dis disinformation and, and really just untruth. You, I wanted to ask you because you already kind of said it's satanic. You know, people will ask me and I know they ask you, you know, they always want to like a hierarchical classification of like who the forces of good and evil are. And this is obviously an opinion question, because as I always say, like we consented as souls to be here. We, we, we know everything, but we've chosen to forget right through the veil. And it's more about remembering than it is learning. But do you think, like, do you feel now, you know, through your work with like, you know, Ramtha and, you know, the School of Enlightenment and, you know, other higher dimensional beings I'm sure you're familiar with or have connected with, do you feel like you can quantify who the enemy is now? Well, so it's it's not for me to quantify who the enemy is. I think that one of the things that's very important is just like you're saying, we are vibrating with intent, okay? Yeah. So what I can do to change the world as it is, is to undo my own deception, my own hate, my own anger. And Beautiful. because I've done that, then, then the vista of reality changes in terms of, am I at war with that evil? No. What I right. am doing is uh, similar to what you were saying earlier. It is that I am refining the light within me so that I am frequency specific with the right. reality right. that reflects that. 
So as I am speaking truth, being love, I am allowing and I am endeavoring to illuminate my own being and my own knowledge base and be of service to the light, the Holy Spirit within us all, within all of humanity, then that is my contribution to the fight. This is a dual plane. So there's light and there's darkness. Right. I'm beautiful. I mean, that's amazing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about light medicine and we can kind of geek out. Uh, your point is, how is light medicine different from many alternative approaches? As I told you, I created this like giant drawn out outline and stuff. So I have, so from my definition, and again, this is just my points, you know, highlights from the book. And again, it's such a profound work. Uh, it's the integration of the, the integration of the quantum into what I call health optimization, right? Which is very alternative, uh, bleeding edge, tip of the spear tactics that you and I, you know, use with some people. Uh, you know, in the world. And then um, I kind of have it just dotted out. You can respond to this is when you understand who you are as a master creator, uh, you can literally, you can heal yourself of anything. Uh, And then I also have, um, you have a lot about uh, quantum coherence. You already talked about harmony and disharmony. You know, there's dissonance and resonance and incoherence and coherence. Um, But can you just talk a little bit about that whole idea of integrating quantum, the quantum or quantum physics into health optimization? So if you think about that, all material reality actually springs forth from the tiny, the the subatomic particles and those subatomic particles, they're collapsed into reality by our intent. So the fact that if our intent, for example, is to uh, observe disharmony or be fearful in regular medicine or in science, you know, there's research that, for example, says that your telomeres, which are related to, uh, uh, you know, your health status would be shortening. And that is a marker that your health is affected. Well, in biophysics, just looking at it from a different level, uh, the, the idea of harmony or love or joy, uh, uh is also affecting health. So disharmony is, uh, is affecting health negatively and is causing the manifestation of dis-ease or loss of light. And what I endeavor in my book is to capture Uh, all people's language, because ultimately these are scientific ways or modalities of expressing one and the same thing and language is inadequate of doing that. So for example, uh, you know, from your perspective, a, a peptide, if I look at it just as an information carrier, that's one way of looking at it, but I can also look at it as an electron and light donor. GHK copper, which you mentioned, resets 30% of the human genes back to health in the brain it increases gene transcription between 300 and 500% in neurons. But what it does on an atomic level, it's a proton donor. So it gives atomic energy to the DNA chain that actually is communicating with the rest of the body via electron transfer and ultimately biophotonic light. So What I'm specifically doing is just changing the altitude of looking at the science and explaining it in a different way that would then make sense and create a more coherent picture. Amazing stuff. I love in the book how you talk about everything is related. You know, uh, well, well, why don't you just real quick define before I go deeper, uh, who Ramtha is. So for people that will read the book, because many people will read the book after this. Ramtha, the enlightenment, uh, the enlightened one is, is uh, a channeled being that is channeled through Jay-Z Knight and has a school called Ramtha School of Enlightenment, of which I am a student at. And his message was, behold God, that all human beings are divine. And he proceeded to explain in 40 years of teaching of why we are here and give disciplines for us to experience uh, uh, what this divine in us really is because 
because if we are humans who have thoughts that suck, it's really challenging to think of yourself as divine. So uh, in this school, it is a training camp of the mind. And what I discuss, it's really an, uh, the most extraordinary academy of the mind because it has taught me how does a thought affect the body? What yeah. is that connection between our soul journey and our health? And why do we have certain voices in our head? And so Rantha explained all of that. And to me, it was the most extraordinary knowledge. And it made sense to me. And it helped me tremendously. It saved my life, you know, uh, in my journey through with cancer and other illnesses. And so this is this is where I found that uh, life made sense, in, if you will. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. It's, I mean, there's so much in here that I, and I know I want to make this podcast as short and as profound and actionable as I can, but there's so much like, you know, he has a statement that you probably wrote 10 times in the book about you are a conglomerate of a neighborhood of diversified light whose harmony is you. Um, you know, I look at humanity, meaning us in these physical avatar bodies as literally biophotonic plasmatic discharge, right? Like people in the UFOlogy community see yellow orbs or orange type orbs or whatever. And I would literally venture to say that that is the human soul slash spirit, you know, the, the, the etheric energy field of what we truly are at base essence, right? Cause even Ramtha talks about how at death, your base essence, you become who you really are. You're not this physical body. And as you know, so many people are so attached to their physical body as like the be all end all. It's everything that they understand, but um, it's, it, it's, it, I, you know, again, I, I think of us as vibrating molecules and standing waves I know some of my teachers are, will always say, you know, getting to torsion and we're going to talk about torsion, but hopefully you're an oscillating wave, you know, more so than a standing wave. But uh, it's just, you're, I mean, like I said, I mean, I've read so many books that, you know, attempt to go into quant the quantum and to explain it. And you've done just such a profound job of making it uh, understandable to, I, I would say lay people. I mean, I, I know that, you know, quantum physics, I think kind of freaks people out. Uh, you know, when they hear it, especially the Newtonian trust the science people. Um, but there's just, you've just done such a, a, a profound and amazing job again in this book of like really breaking it down. I mean, there's so much that I could go deeper, but I'll, I'll, I'll just try to keep it, you know, where are the talking points, but um, how would you say light medicine is different now than like the average functional slash holistic medicine provider who is, you know, somewhat detached now from the you know, standard care or standard of care practice model and is attempting to, you know, bring in all these various other healing modalities. How does light medicine differentiate? The difference is, is uh, you know, the, the tools are similar. It is how yeah. they're being put together. So what I explained was I started looking at all molecules, for example, supplements, and I looked at them from what is their light emission spectroscopy and the ability to become an electron donor, donor of electricity or life force. And then actually things make sense because you have electron stealer that a lot of pharmaceutical drugs are exactly that. And you have electron donors uh, that also give off light. So for example, curcumin or uh, all of these supplements that we use it as adaptogens. And what my point was is that the science of that is really not understanding the biophysical uh, mechanism there because you can look at a molecule and for example, study curcumin and its effect for diabetes. But what I'm saying in the book is if you have a strong electron donor, it will upregulate all health-related genes and downregulate all disease-creating genes because it is a mechanism of affecting the coherent whole of light. 
So if, if, if you are a coherent light field that has so much light in it and disease is a loss of light, then anything that will increase that light force will promote health. So for example, we discussed about improving your own state of mind, using molecules that are high electron donors, uh, using things like light therapy, sound therapy, frequency. You can go into electromagnetic, uh, um, you know, multi-wave oscillators. All of these things can be utilized for this one purpose, to enhance the overall uh, light um, uh, coherence in the system. Beautiful. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, I, the good news is, Doc, Anna, Doc, I call you both, uh, is that a lot of people are waking up on this planet right now, even in the allopathic community. And that's why I got to ask you, this is kind of a funny question, but like how many of your patients in your board certified practice are like where you and I are in this conversation? I mean, do you have like, I mean, because I would assume that you're attracting people now like that, right? Because of your book is out there. But do you have a number of people like us that come to you now, like actually in the allopathic side or are they just completely separate? So I actually live in the town of the school of Ramtha school of enlightenment. So uh -huh. um, these are people who have heard this for 40 years <laughs> <laughs> and the people that That's I wrote, awesome. I, that was, I was going there. I was going there. <laughs> the, the people that I wrote about in the book, you know, we were discussing the blue room technology, you know, they, they knew how to use their own mindful uh, focus to heal themselves and use the modalities that I use. And I detoxify them from heavy metals and use different, uh, you know, peptides and vitamin supplements, et cetera, to help them. So it's a comprehensive approach. And they were also using the blue room. So these miraculous occurrences that happened that I described in the book, these were people who also knew that their attitude affected their health. And more and more people are coming now who are not in the school, but who are attracted to this knowledge and who just intuitively know that there's more to things than, than you know, what they're being told through the fake news media. And, and, uh, and so they're very, very receptive. And I think that the future is exactly this light medicine that uh, there were always pharmaceutical drugs that have killed people. It's the third leading cause of death, medical right. errors and medication. So I think that, that the system is breaking down as people are waking up. And unfortunately, the journey is very, very painful for a it, lot yes. of people. Yes, it is for so many. I have to tell you this. This is, I, I mean, I want to, I have so much to tell you. Some of, some of it is not for the public, but the public is watching this. But in the background, as you're talking, I'm getting messages from someone <laughs> who is very interested in this conversation, you know? So I don't normally message people when I'm having podcasts, but you're special. <laughs> And so, like, as you said something, the universe uh, acquiesced and the message came in and I'm like, wow, because as you know, there's literally no coincidences. We create synchronicities. I, I mean, it's just I wish I could say it, but I can't. It'll be off air. But uh, well, so I have to ask you, like, in the School of Enlightenment, which I'll talk to you about that, too. Um, do, is there conversations about this? Because I know, you, like you said, they're not quantifying good and evil and stuff like that, lining up the forces and all that. But like, are there discussions about the constructs that are in the third dimension? Let's just say for whatever we call it, let's just call Big Pharma Rockefeller medicine. <laughs> I mean, I mean, are, are there, I mean, are there discussions about like, you know, what are the big prime movers of the negativity that keeps, you know, human consciousness suppressed? Because, and maybe you don't know the answer, I, I, I can't believe I'm not familiar with Last Walt of the Tyrants. I see it. It's Romp, Rompa's book. Okay, cool. So I just ordered it. Um, does he say who he is? I mean, we know he's a higher dimensional being. But again, for the average person in the public, like, is there a way to quantify it based on the hierarchies that they understand? You know, because I know if you're a Christian, you know, you think of like archangels and whatnot. And then if you're in the, you know, our universe, you think of Metatron. I mean, is there a way to like, quantify what 
I know, I know it's a, it, it's a very evolved uh, being, but it, it, is, does he like ever talk about like where he comes from? Yeah, so all of this can be found by people. Uh, you know, the white book, he discusses that he lived on this earth 35,000 years ago and he ascended. Awesome. Okay, so he's an ascended master, so to speak. Yes. Okay, and 36,000 years ago when he was here, uh, was that Lemuria or yes. Atlantis? Atlantis, Lemuria. Okay. All right. Um, okay, cool. So I don't want to take that. So let's go deeper than a little bit about light medicine. Let's talk about torsion physics because torsion physics absolutely fascinates me. You know, there's a five page section in your book that I have sent to so many people. I'm actually having it laminated, uh, but it's the, it's the, um, it's when you, you know, it talks about ramp this, you know, uh, triangles, but like that whole section is just, it starts where, you know, torsion travels through most physical media and then it ends to uh, the biophoton field in turn coupled directly into DNA through the chromatin. And then, you know, you're talking about patterns in, uh, of spin. Um, but I'll just set you up and then, and by the way, my 11 canceled. So I'm going to keep you a little bit longer if you have time. Are you okay to go beyond 11? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, and I promise you guys, I'm not going to lose you guys, but just listen and pay attention and please purchase her book because it is such a beautiful book. Um, but like, I love how torsion physics, again, the oscillation of energy and light uh, can explain everything, right? Because it literally can harbor everything at once, all realities, all permutations, all timelines in the present now. And understanding how torsion, you know, this the torsion field, torsion energy uh, can contain all of that. It, it's it's a beautiful explanation. I have never seen it in the way that you explained it. Now, obviously, you're going to say that this is Ramtha giving you guys this information, right? But you learned it and you wrote it down in a very explainable way. And I'm telling you, I read a lot of books on quantum physics. And so again, I, I have to champion you and say thank you so much for putting that in, in, into place. But can you just talk a little bit about torsion and the way you want to speak about it? Yeah, so torsion physics, it really comes from Russia. There was an astrophysicist who discussed it and uh, really explained that torsion physics is the density of time and that all subatomic particles have a spin. When that spin changes, that spin encodes information. The information of the particle, when the spin changes, this spin creates torsion and this torsion field affects all uh, forces of nature. So, uh, you know, gravity, the uh, nuclear forces, all of those forces are affected. And the reason yeah. why that's important is because Einstein said that, uh, you know, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, but that's incorrect because torsion fields uh, can transfer information instantaneously. So all psychic phenomena that uh, say, for example, that we can remote view an event that right. is five days into the future uh, and know it now, the answer, we know it now, and that all time is simultaneously makes much more sense under the premise of torsion physics. Yep. In the school, and this was published actually in uh, the journal uh, of, of physics, uh, there was research done where uh, students used the disciplines and the gravitational field uh, was uh, measured and they were losing gravity. So, uh, you know, anti-gravity propulsion systems are something that's that's being covered up and, and kind of, you know, dismissed, but free energy, zero point energy access, anti-gravity, uh, all of these things are, are part and can be explained through this discipline of torsion uh, physics. And um, so the Russians were absolutely using this. And the reason why it's important is it has everything to do with what's called vacuum engineering. So we discussed the quantum field, but below that is the vacuum that people say it's empty, but it isn't because it contains all possibilities of all things, all ideas. And there's a way through torsion and there's, there's technology that's called um, 
uh, inferometry that that actually allows vacuum engineering. So this is actually what's being used for things like weather warfare, uh, right. or even mind control. Or um, so those those aspects of science are are sciences that have been suppressed. And uh, instead, you know, we are being told that there is a second law of thermodynamics. No, there isn't. You know, these right. laws don't, don't uphold. And uh, basically, if we are to evolve as a species to be able to access zero point energy, to be able to evolve in our technologies, to be in harmony with nature, this new physics makes complete sense. And ultimately, the, the medicine of the future is a frequency based medicine. It will have nothing to do with things to ingest. You're going to ingest information. That's exactly right. That's literally exactly right. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Um, well, I want to just, I want to, I just ordered the book, but I want to like ask you about some of the stuff that, uh, he's predicting. Does he give actual timelines like literally, or is it, you know, kind of like, it's still up to us based on, you know, the human consciousness wave, as far as like how outcomes ultimately determine, right? Because we are creating and manifesting our reality, you know, with our thoughts. So obviously if you could, you know, I always default to the Hawkins uh, scale. I need to get the ramp, the scale back here. I actually started to think about doing that uh, where I'm moving to. Um, but it, it, does he actually give times like actual definitive times, or does he say in the book that, uh, it's up to the human collective consciousness field to determine the timeline? So Jay, I really recommend that people read it. I want to clarify. I am just yeah. a student. I am not yeah. a teacher. I'm not yeah. authorized to teach Ramtha's teachings. I got permission to speak about what I spoke to in the book, uh, you know, uh, but, but I want to also uh, honor this. I am not I'm not a teacher, but uh, yeah. there are classes um, called the, you know, the class one-on-one that really discuss this very well. And there are people extremely well trained in this. And so all I can speak of is my own personal experience and how it, uh, it applies to the work that I have uh, described in the book. But all yeah. of that information is available. So I okay, would sorry. okay. Yeah, I mean, I just ordered it. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, I I totally respect that and totally understand that. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about maybe to just you know finish this because uh, I have so many other things I want to talk about. Just where we're going with uh, light medicine and how uh, available it is. I mean, I did a podcast yesterday with a guy by the name I forget it. John Baxter. He's the owner of Anti Aging Bed. And, you know, they've created all these new technologies that you guys talk about with the blue room in the book, you know, the ultraviolet, uh, you know, the different infrared wavelengths of light and how powerful they are from a healing standpoint and stuff like that. So my point is, is that there's a lot, as you know, there's a lot of new, call them golden age, new earth tech that is actually out there right now that is accessible. I'm sure some of it is uh, you know, run by the parasitics and, 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 and is a trick, but I know that there's a lot of not, you know, and, you know, one of the things, you know, we could talk about if you want to, cause I have a whole outline about carbon 60, um, just so you know, my company, so we patented a hair, pro, a hair uh, regrowth product that's based on GHKCU and carbon 60, super C60. And it's revolutionary in regrowing your hair. I would literally be bald. I have male, male pattern baldness, the gene on my mom's side. And, you know, people look at my hair and they're like, dude, you had a hair transplant, you know, and I'm almost 52. And I'm like, nope, that's our product. And, you know, we sold our company because we had a patent for that. But once I started reading what you were writing about carbon 60, I don't even know if some of the people that make carbon 60, Anna, even understand, you know, all the different properties that carbon 60 has around, uh, you know, absorption of light and the white, the, the light wavelength from a healing standpoint. But I, I just wanted to say that since I read your book, I started increasing my dosage, right? And I, my, my good friend owns this company. This is where we source our carbon 60. And that's Ken Schwartz who owns Purple Power. I don't know if you know him. Yes. Uh, he's a great guy. But uh, they changed their name now to Shop C60 because Purple Power C60 isn't the best URL. 
Uh, but but I started up upping my dose with carbon sixty. I started taking three tablespoons a day, and I got to tell you, my hair is darker. It's actually thicker. Uh, my recovery from exercise is insanely better. Uh, and I actually just have better energy. Now I'm already a biohack, you know, freak, but like, there's no question that carbon 60 holds unbelievable, uh, you know, anti-aging, regenerative, restorative, rejuvenative qualities about it. So let's just kind of talk about like, cause you have them all in your book. Like if somebody comes into your practice right now and they want to, you know, say, doc, I want you to create like the perfect anti-aging cocktail for me, what would that be? And I know everybody's different based on their age and their activity level and all that stuff, but like, what would you be, what would be a general recommendation you would provide? So Jay, that really depends on, I have some technologies in my office that really uh, I look at to quantify things. So I look at people's brain health through the Wavi Brain EG and uh, because that's really important. A lot of people have brain fog and they have yeah. premature age, uh, aging of the brain. And so I'm, I've am i really become an expert in in reversing brain aging. I've, I've functionally age reversed uh, people's brain by like 30 years in, a, in about three to four months, just uh, by improving electrical voltage, for example, or optimizing certain areas. I look at autonomic nervous system function, which again, literally measures life force in, in the subconscious control of all organ systems. So then, I, you know, I also look at their blood work. I'm still an allopathic physician. So evaluating and getting all of this data and then seeing where they're at. And then I look at whether or not do they need to be detoxified from heavy metals because, you know, this is being sprayed upon us via chemtrails. It's in food stuff, lead, cadmium, arsenic, all of those actually scramble the light of the biophotonic right. light field. And if you want to age reverse somebody, you have to detoxify this stuff. And then uh, nutritionally optimizing them, I look at things like, you know, what is their vitamin C level, their nitric right. oxide level, uh, their oxidative stress. And then, uh, again, looking at their, their organ function from their blood work and then these couple tests. And from that, then I develop a, 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 a protocol. Uh, I use a lot of IV therapy and then I use peptides, for example, epithalon, which lengthens telomeres. Yep. Uh, it's really uh, phenomenal. Uh, you know, if you've read my book, I've, I've even been able to reverse people's congestive heart failure. Literally yep. the left ventricular function improves, the blood pressure normalizes, the diabetes goes away, you know, the vision improves. It's phenomenal. And so I do use the GHK copper. I use CJC 1295, uh, you know, to unlock basically the senescent secretory yep. phenotype. So it's, it's a concoction of things depending really on what specifically their, their findings are. I'm a huge fan of methylene blue, which is a, a big anti-aging molecule, direct electron donor, uh, increases oxygen delivery to cells between 37 to 70% yeah. and bypasses mitochondrial dysfunction. I've seen miraculous things with that. So it, it depends. There's so much that we can use and, uh, it also, is important to individualize it because not all people, depending on their state of illness, uh, can tolerate all things and it has to be carefully monitored. It's interesting because uh, I just wrote an article a week ago about nitric oxide and how it's another one of those things that people truly don't understand. And then the other thing about nitric oxide is most nitric oxide supplements are bogus. Yeah. If you understand. Yeah. <laughs> So it's crazy, like what's happening. And then also, you know, people talk about like beetroot and, you know, getting access to it. And there's obviously almost no way unless you remove a couple of things to even get access to it. So you got to get the right nitric oxide supplement. But I love how you do all those testing. Um, it's funny. I think that's what I'm saying. Like once I connect you with like my community, right? Because like most of my community are very affluent. Uh, C list, do anything type biohackers, right? Like they've succeeded in the matrix and now it's like, I want to live to 180. So it's like when they watch this podcast, it's going to be like, bro, how do I, how do I work with her? I, I'm telling <laughs> you, like, you have no idea. Like I, I should have, like, we could have just gone down that path at the very beginning and not talked about all the woo, uh, you know, and it, people would still want to work with you. But, um, well, so beyond that, then, um, I love epitalon and thymolin. 
right? Like there's now, you know, using those two combined, I mean, you're, you're right. You're, you're talking about serious age regression, but the, you know, the thing is, and I know, you know, this, like a lot of people want to do all these things after living a life of what I call, you know, being a metabolic emergency for 50 years. Right. And they have like massive amounts of tr uh, uh, tr triglyceride. I mean, not triglyceride, but, um, visceral body fat and inflammation. And they're obviously insulin resistant. They have metabolic disease or disorder or dysregulation. And it's just like, you, you know, you know, you, you, they want you to fix them in 90 days to six months. And you're like, uh, bro, you did this for 50 years. <laughs> you know? It's not as simple as that, but, uh, but it's so cool that you are doing all this, like, um, from a brain testing, the technology that you use, what is the technology again that you do to test the brain? It's called uh, Wavi, uh, W-A-V-I, and it's a, a brain EG uh, that allows testing, functional testing in the office. It's not a diagnostic tool, but it's a phenomenal screening tool. And it also allows the fact that, uh, you know, if you, for example, have an initial test and then you do an intervention and then you retest, you can actually prove improvement, which I think is really important. There's a lot of docs out there, you know, who just, you know, throw a bunch of vitamins on people yeah. and here, take yeah. this. I like yeah. proof and I like sure. the fact that, uh, okay, you know, here's our goal. We're going to give ourselves, you know, six weeks, three months, we're going to retest. And this is what you can expect. And I love that because the more motivated people are also to be mindfully engaged. Uh, you know, nobody can fix somebody else, but, but if you come to me and you say, you know, and I've had old people, you know, in my book, I describe a 75 year old gal who was sent home from the hospital after a brain hemorrhage, she couldn't see, couldn't talk. She was in a wheelchair. You know, they sent her home to die and um, the family wheeled her in and and she barely could lift her head. And, and uh, I asked her, I said, why are you here? And she says, I want to live. And I asked her, are you willing to fight for that? And she right. said, yes. And That's in awesome. six weeks, she got her vision back and she was talking and she started walking with a walker. She's still alive. And so uh, I think that that the human spirit infuses extraordinary light when it is willful. And uh, and then, right. you know, with people like this, we can do miracles. That's amazing. Um, talk about uh, HBOT, you know, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. My business partner is like all fascinated into HBOT right now. I mean, I know it's been around and I know all the guys. Uh, by the way, when you when you talked about methylene blue, or do you know uh, Ted Achacoso, Dr. Ted? I'm sure you probably you don't know him. That's fascinating. Um, I got to connect you with him then too. Um, he's kind of the guy that founded, not founded, but was one of the people that like you know patented it and bringing it uh, to market in the way people are using it now. But um, just talk a little bit about HBOT. Like, how do you use that? You know, hyperbaric oxygen therapy in your treatment. I used to have it in my office, but then my AV program uh, expanded so much that that I uh, don't have it in my office anymore. I have some people who are still, uh, you know, going to local <clears throat> hyperbaric uh, areas. Uh, so I think that people can use it as an adjunct to treatments. It, some people have phenomenal results. Uh, I think that all of these modalities are definitely, you know, helpful. And the whole point is if you improve oxygenation, cellular yeah. in, uh, yeah. oxygenation, you downregulate inflammation and you increase uh, cellular electricity, that means age reversal. And uh, so you are, uh, it's just a different mechanism for the same purpose. And uh, people, some people have amazing results. Absolutely. So Do you, you can, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. So you can absolutely uh, use that as well. If it's accessible uh, to people, I totally recommend it. So you, you mentioned, I mean, you mentioned a lot of things. Uh, I want to just briefly, and then we're going to end on uh, talking about the V and your theories and where we're going with it, because I think it's a very pressing conversation. I mean, you've had some profound articles on your Substack recently. I mean, we know what's in it, but before I go there, uh, you talk a lot about TA1, you know, thymus and alpha one. Um, which I love and I think is absolutely critical if you really want to be proactive about your immunity uh, in the age of the bioweapon, um, you know, to, to, to be familiar with. Um, do, do you, like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is that something that you recommend people take a maintenance dosage of 
year round, you know, similar to a, a, a Petalon and a Thymolin, you know, program of maybe once or twice a year to extend uh, telomeres? I mean, h- how do you look at using TA1? So the issue really is that, you know, the International Peptide Society was booming and then the FDA moved in and basically, you know, shut it all down. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, a couple of years ago, I had access via prescription to thymolin, thymoglobulin. Uh, we yeah. had uh, thymosin alpha-1, thymosin beta-4. So this means all four thymus gland peptides, which are amazing for H reversal, as well as, you know, if you re- rejuvenate an H reversal, the immune system, then clearly your anti-aging benefits are phenomenal. And the Russian studies showed that if you combine the epithelium with uh, one of the thymus gland peptides, they did thymoline, the H reversal process is substantially increased. So it's much more challenging now. Obviously, the biohackers, you know, they have other sources. But as a physician who's treating specifically, um, you know, I used to use TA1 for my cancer patients. I used to use it for, uh, you know, asthma, just reversing. It just went away, you know, and, uh, um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, those kinds of things. Now in this very tightly regulated, uh, you know, arena, it's it's more challenging to do this. Uh, so you are in a different sphere than I am because I'm legally bound to what I can prescribe and cannot prescribe. Thank God there's still access to other uh, um, peptides that, that are very useful, uh, so, but what my hope would be for the future is basically that we get access back to all of these m- amazing, yeah. amazing peptides. It's going to be the end of the pharmaceutical industry, you know, mm-hmm. but the, the pharmaceutical industry needs to end because it's, it's a killer industry. Demonic. You know? Yeah. It's demonic. Well, um, you are in the right place because after I tell you What I'm going to tell you after this call, you will never have a lot. You will not be lacking any pharmaceutical peptides ever again. Uh, And you can use them in your patients. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, so guys, guess what? This is when the show ends because this is when Doc and I have to speak privately because there are prying ears and eyes. 